Good morning, grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. To all of our church family, we are still gathering information for our upcoming newsletter on graduating students. Please send us the names of your children and grandchildren, anyone who's related to you and who's graduating from college or high school this spring. We want to thank everyone for participating in that and for so many of you who have sent us names already. Please try to get those things in by tomorrow, Monday morning, to our church office so that Denise can finish preparing the July newsletter. We ask that you uh, keep all of our members and their loved ones who are fighting COVID-19 in your prayers. During these troubling times, it helps to take a moment to reflect on the many blessings we have in our lives, to give thanks for them, and to find ways we can share them with one another. Let us keep in our prayers also our country, our country which is enduring so many situations of violence in recent weeks. On Friday evening, a fellow in Atlanta, Georgia, was uh, shot and killed by the police there. Let us keep uh, the family of Richard Brooks in our prayers. And we pray that indeed the many situations of violence and the great injustices that have recently occurred throughout our country might be addressed by our leaders throughout the country and that needed reform might take place. Let us pray for those conditions. May we always seek the peaceful and just reign of God in our lives. During the service, we ask that you stay muted until you hear the music for the hymns. My daughter, Julie, will unmute us that we might all sing together. We come to worship together in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Join me in the call to worship this morning, and your response when I pause is, we give this gift to the world. We give this gift to the world. The church is called to cure the sick. We give this gift to the world. We are called to proclaim the resurrection to new life, we give this gift to the world. The church is called to unburden the spiritually weighed down. We give this gift to the world. In the power of the Holy Spirit, let us proclaim our love of God. And we're gonna sing our opening hymn, Savior Like a Shepherd.
is living. There was nice to see you. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not a minute. Let us draw near to God, and may we confess our sin. Let us pray. Almighty God, you poured out your Spirit upon gathered disciples, creating bold tongues, open ears, and a new community of faith. We confess that we hold back the force of your Spirit working among us. We do not listen for your word of grace nor do we speak the good news of your love or live as a people made one in Christ. Have mercy on us, O God. Transform our timid lives by the power of your spirit and fill us with a flaming desire to be a faithful and compassionate people doing your will for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. I declare to you, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. May the God of mercy, who forgives you all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you to eternal life. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen and amen. Peace be with you and also with you. Please now share a sign of peace with those who are near to you. I'd like to invite all the boys and girls to gather near to the computer monitors and screens throughout our congregation. And I'd like to share a message with them this morning entitled, God Can Use Everyone. Good morning, boys and girls. I want to ask you a question. Do you like to work jigsaw puzzles? Each piece is a different shape, color, and size. And if you're patient, a beautiful picture develops from all the pieces that you connect together. Pieces like this one. And I like to work jigsaw puzzles, and this is one of the ones the kids had. And this one's of a train engine. And here we put the final piece in for the smokestack, and there our puzzle is finished. I hope you enjoy working with jigsaw puzzles like my grandchildren do. You know, people are sometimes like puzzle pieces. They seem as if they won't work together and then eventually they do. Jesus' 12 disciples were just like that. But eventually they all worked together. Some were rich, some were poor, some were quiet, and some were loud. They went and they spread the love of God to the world. That was their mission. They spread the news of Jesus. Our God, our wondrous God, can use anybody to do God's work. God fits all the pieces together and uses all of us in God's wonderful ways to indeed do God's will. And I know that God can use you to share a beautiful message with the world this week, if you are willing. Just like he used the 12 disciples long ago, he can use you. Amen. Let us pray together. Gracious God, 
help our children to run the long race with confidence and courage. And may your Holy Spirit help them to work together with other parts of the church to share the love of Jesus with the world around them. Amen. Take care, kids, and have a great week. This morning, our gospel lesson is found in Matthew chapter 9 from verses 35 to chapter 10, verse 8. Here we hear about the great harvest. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. And when he saw the crowds, Jesus had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. And then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. And then Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the 12 apostles. First Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These 12 Jesus sent out with the following instruction. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. We are blessed this morning in the hearing of God's holy word. This morning, my sermon is entitled, A People of Compassion. When Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. There certainly are some inequities in our society. Recent protest marches across the country are lifting up the need for our society to reform some of the ways in which our police deal with people. It was truly appalling to see the way a police officer killed George Floyd in Minneapolis. We're saddened to hear of more of this taking place with the death of Rayshard Brooks in Atlanta on Friday night. As Christian men and women, we are taught from the time we are babies to love one another. Jesus told us to love one another in the Gospel of John. One of the earliest pieces of faith material that I memorized, and I'm sure that you could probably say the same thing, was the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Indeed, I believe that we Christians hold an answer to the problems of our day. We need to love as Jesus has loved us. We need to show compassion and not a hardness of heart in these chaotic coronavirus days. Yes, I think we have an answer for the problems within our society and we can share the love of Jesus and our Lord's compassion with the world around us. The New York Times 
on April 24th included information about people who are at risk in our society. The article said nearly half, 47%, of nursing, psychiatric, and home health aides don't receive a single day of paid sick leave. A million frontline healthcare workers have no health insurance coverage of their own. The median pay for nursing assistants and orderlies who are risking their lives to work during the COVID-19 pandemic is $14.25 an hour. Only 13% of women who work as home health aides have any kind of retirement plan. There may be many within our congregation who fit this description. These are the kinds of issues that we must address if we are going to have a just society. It is unloving to take advantage of people, people who are like us and who need to provide for their families. We need to develop a more compassionate society that reflects the love of Jesus Christ. I read about a church that showed compassion recently. Compassion for a person who many would not want to normally show compassion to. It was a 63-year-old man who professed to be an atheist, a non-believer in God. Each year, this man threatened to sue the county over the courthouse manger scene at Christmas time. He and his wife were very negative about the Christian faith because they had never seen the good side of the faith, only the negative-minded individuals who treated them unkindly. The fellow was a cab driver and found out that he had a detached retina. He was forced to quit driving his yellow cab and resigned himself to the thought of a future of blindness. Eye surgery would have cost him $20,000 and he couldn't find even enough money to buy groceries. A church member alerted the pastor of their church to the family's needs, and the pastor checked out the situation. The man, by his very character, was a negative-thinking individual, and he didn't want money for the surgery because he wasn't sure it was going to work, he wasn't sure it would even last, such negativity. But he did take some money for groceries and some rental assistance. Initially, $400 was collected, and much more kept coming in for this man and his wife. The man was so amazed by the generosity of the Christian community, and he has said, these people are acting like what the Bible says a Christian does. Think of that. These words of a professed atheist, that these people are acting like what the Bible says a Christian does. Now, some, cheap, some church people were upset by the generosity that was shown to an atheist, but by and large, most of the people were happy to see what God was doing in their lives as they were reaching out. And now, wonder of all wonders, the man says that he would like to buy a star for the top of the tree in next year's manger scene down at the courthouse. Wow. Love and compassion are so powerful. Love and compassion are very important tools in our spiritual toolbox. Amazing things happen when we align ourselves with God's purposes. Peaceful protests can bring about much needed reforms. Churches can lift people up from the depths of hopelessness and despair. 
Prayers can bring about healing. Our lives can find renewed meaning and purpose. I believe the biblical image of harassed and helpless sheep is a fitting simile for many people in our time. Surrounding us are people who are frightened and they are confused. Many of us share the same feeling. How many of us see the confusion in restaurants where children are out of control, in schools where the younger teachers are no longer in charge, where abuse and neglect invade the sanctity of our homes in a civil government that seems at times to lack common sense and a desire to serve the common good. I believe that Jesus came to bring salvation to a world full of those who are harassed and helpless. That Jesus came to bring life salvation to the world and not condemnation. There is hope for everyone in the world. Sin needs to be condemned, but a steady diet of judgmental preaching by our churches and our society is not, is not what the Lord Jesus had in mind. The Bible says that he had compassion for the crowd. I think Jesus would have applauded the church that reached out and changed the heart of that atheist. Daily Jesus, I think, is reminding us to take care of the struggling healthcare workers all across our country. Compassion is really needed in these current days. But it's compassion that needs to be followed up with action. For there is a harvest. Jesus said the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. And when I read that, I wonder, now just what does that mean? And I believe it means that we are the needed workers, the ones who must go into the world with compassion and make a difference. It means that we, you and I, we are the ones to save people. We are the ones who have the opportunity to claim people for our Lord. We are the ones who are able to give new life to worn and tired souls who are struggling just to get by. We are the ones who can help to set young people on the right path. Let our church, let Freedom's Church be known as a place where the love of Christ is lived out. Express the joy, the wonder, and the beauty of the Christ-filled life. We need to forget, we really do, we need to forget our financial bottom lines, our institutional pride, and we need to go out and meet a world that is confused and hurting and dying. Each of us has the tools deep within us to serve as harvesters in the field, and we can bring people to life. We can bring people to faith. We can give people hope. We can bring them to God's eternal love. Be thankful, brothers and sisters, if you have never been in a situation where you needed help, if you have been in need, then you know what I'm talking about this morning. So many around us are in need. In talking with the Oli Valley Food Pantry recently, I found out that they are very much in need of all kinds of supplies to meet the demand on the pantry. So feel free to stop by the Oli Valley Food Pantry and help them out. Give them some food to reach out to others. Give them money for some cards, perhaps, that they can hand out to people. Give them the opportunity to be our hands 
reaching out to others. You know, it's like the story. It's like the story of a vicar in England who went to visit one of the well-off members of his congregation. It was winter and bitterly cold outside, and the vicar was well wrapped up in a heavy overcoat. As the visit drew to a close, the vicar told the man that he wished to ask him something confidential. This caused the man to accompany the vicar outside into the cold. The man didn't bother to put on his jacket. He thought it wouldn't be necessary. After all, what could the vicar want from him that would take that long? But the vicar, cozy in his heavy overcoat, began talking about one thing and another and until his host was literally shivering with cold. The man repeatedly tried to find out what the vicar wanted to ask him so that he could go back inside, but the vicar just kept making small talk. Wouldn't you like to go inside again, vicar? asked the shivering man. But the vicar serenely continued chatting. At last, the wealthy man said with chattering teeth, Vicar, if you don't ask me what you want to right now, I'm going to die of cold. Sir, the vicar said, there's a family where the father has been laid off. I need enough money from you to supply fuel to get them through this cold winter. Immediately, the rich man peeled a roll of notes from his wallet and handed it to the vicar. The man explained his generosity like this. He said, vicar, now I know why you left me standing so long out here in the cold. You knew that never in my comfortable life had I been really cold. Now that I've experienced this misery for myself, my heart has opened up to a need of which I was before unaware. Despair is not the answer. Look around and be aware. Put yourself into the other person's shoes. Love is the answer. Avoid being callous. We all need boundaries in our relationships, yes, but do not let these boundaries rob you of being a compassionate soul. Compassion is Christ at work within you each day. So reach out to the elderly, the sick, substance abusers, broken families, the down and out as well as the up and in. Remember the teachings of Jesus. And yes, recite the golden rule on a regular basis. Think of your fellow citizens who need our support if justice is to prevail here and around our country. Sit down. Write your state and national legislators about your concerns. Together, we can be a compassionate people, the people that God sent his son to redeem. Yes, we can be a spirit-filled people. So show love and show it often. The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Let the Lord send you out into the harvest. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. Lead us to the fields of harvest where your children await your life-giving word. God of creation, we rejoice before you this morning. Take the hearts of our scientists and our doctors, our teachers and our politicians, our financiers, and the whole host of your people, and give them an unlimited supply of compassion. This is so needed as people rebuild their lives. We pray that you would protect the essential workers who risk their health daily for us. Help us to be loving and caring partners in the creative process of life, life that you began and watch over daily. And move us with the strength of your Holy Spirit 
move us in our lives and help us share the glory of your love beyond our homes, beyond our families, beyond our church. Help us to do our Christian duty and combat hate with love. Help us show each other compassion. All glorious Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, bring peace and hope to your children. As we struggle through our fear, as we struggle through our anger, as we work through our pain, we ask that you show us how to come together, how we may work together, and how we may heal our nation together. Amen. Each week we gather for our virtual worship on Sunday. Whether you join us live on Zoom, online, by phone, or through YouTube, or if you watch the recording of the service, this time together enables us to see and hear our Freedom's family and to continue to grow in faith together. Through these difficult times, worshiping together virtually allows us to create a sense of community that is so much a part of our church life. As we continue this period of social distancing and isolation, it becomes increasingly important that we check in on one another to ward off loneliness and depression. If you're struggling in any way and need help, we are here for you and urge you to reach out. The church answering machine gets checked regularly, as does its email. And by phone number and email, they are listed in the Freedom's Directory. We urge church members to support each other in prayer, with trust, and with hope. Please remember to mail your offering to the church this week. Your generosity is so greatly appreciated. Let us keep Freedom's Church strong and healthy as we move into God's future. And now, please join me as we offer to our Lord God the prayer that his son Jesus taught long ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. After the benediction, you may stay on the phone or online if you'd like. Even if you only stay to say hi, we'd love to see you. My daughter Julie will be enabling everyone to speak and to be seen if you choose to be. It takes a few minutes for her to enable everyone, so if you can't talk right away to someone here on Zoom, you should be able to soon. To be on seen on Zoom, click the Start Video button when prompted and wait a few seconds. Kathy and I look forward to seeing and talking to all of you. And now may we close our worship with the hymn, Take My Life.
May you know the love of our heavenly parent. May you allow Christ to lift up and fill your heart. And may you sense in these days the power and movement of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. Everyone who is on the phone, you are now unmuted, so feel free to speak. Hello, everybody. Hello. He didn't say any. Picture service, did he? Hello. They, they probably don't know at this point. Obviously. Hi, we can hear you. I would hope. Hello. Hello, Pastor. How you doing today? Hello, Much better than I deserve. Much better than you deserve. No. <laughs> so good to have you with us this morning. Always better to be here. <laughs> good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Who all do we have on here this morning? <clears throat> Tom and Sharon. All right, Tom and Sharon are here. All right, good to have you with us, Tom and Sharon. And my daughter, Tina. Oh, hi, Tina. Hi. Good to have you with us this morning. This is Mabel. Hi, Mabel. Hi, Mabel. Hi, Dolores. Hi, Dolores. Yeah. Good morning. Good to have you with us. Good morning. Good morning, Kathy. Two stepped out of screen. Good. <laughs> Hi, hey, Bruce. Bruce. How you doing? Hi. My video. All right. Say hi to Sue. <laughs> yeah, she's around hey, the Denise. corner. She didn't okay. want to be in the camera. Oh, there's Denise. <laughs> hey, there's Denise. How you doing, Denise? I'm in Annapolis, Maryland with you guys this morning. There you go. Wow. We How's get around, don't there? we? Yep. We do get around. <laughs> oh. uh. I had a wonders of technology. <laughs> it's That's amazing. Right. Yep. And my son? Hello. Hi, oh, son. Hi, son. <laughs> there you go. Good to see you. Yeah, we my have others coming on board here. Breakfast. Oh, your son-in-law's making breakfast. Yes, too bad you can't smell the bacon. My husband's not used to Sunday morning breakfast. <laughs> hi, Brian. Hi, <laughs> Brian. How are you doing, Brian? Julie. Hi, Julie. Hi, Julie. Hi, Julie. Hi, Julie. Hi, Julie. Hi, Julie. There's there's the Comies. There there the Comies. Oh, I see. <laughs> Hi, gang. Hey, hey, you got the camera hooked up. Way to go. Yay. Yes, we did. There you go. Oh, now we you. have the Comies. Yay. There you go. Boy, you are so technologically savvy. <laughs> you are now. Not really. You are now, right? <laughs> yes. Good to see you. Hi, Denise. Good morning. Great to see you. Hello. Hi, How you doing? Hi, Kay. Sandra. Yes, I'm off. There's Joey. Hi, Hi Joey. Richard. Hey, Richard. Oh, all right, good to see you this morning. Hi, Hi Kelly. Kelly. Hi, Kelly. Hi, 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 Hi. Now the faces are starting to pop up. Hi, Kelly, Andy. Hello. Hey, Wayne. Barb, good to see you. There are the same. Yes, Good to be seen. <laughs> Good to see everyone. Yeah. Warriors. Terry. Hi, Terry. Warriors. 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 How are you doing today? Good morning. Hi. Good to see you. Beautiful day, isn't it? Hi. Yes, it is. Thank you. Yeah, the mask. Like Brian. Hello, folks. Good morning, Warriors. Hello. Hey, how are you doing over there? Great, thanks. Yeah, the Matthews are down there. And there's Miller's. Hi, everybody. Good morning. We're here. Good. Good to have you Good. with us, Elizabeth. Yep. There's a blaze of light here. Let's see. Let me. There's a boy. Oh, there they are. Hi, Richard. 
Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing fine. Hi, Ron. Good. Now you know why we mow those yards, right, Richard? Yep. Beautiful day like this. It looks nice Hi, out Braden. there, doesn't it? <laughs> I see you back there. <laughs> nice to see you. Hello, Ron. How are you doing this morning? Ron and Joe. Wow. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Hi, Joe. Good morning, everyone. How are you doing? Hello, Dan and Diane. Diane. Hi, Sam. Hi. Hey, Joe. How's it going? Yeah. It's going well, thank you. All right. Good, good, good morning. Hear Wolf. Good morning, Hi, Ron. Hi, Stan. Diane. Good morning. Hi, Diane. How are you? Hello, folks. Hey, Barbara. Hi, Barbara. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Hey. hey. Good hey, Lee and Carol. How are you doing? Good morning. Good morning. Everybody. We're good. All right. Hey. Thanks for all your work, there, Lee. Oh, no problem. Dave, where's your parka? Aren't you cold? <laughs> Why? <laughs> there you are, Dave. Dave's enjoying the summertime cold. weather. <laughs> good. Good. Good morning, David. Good morning. Good morning, David Wolf. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Hi, Wayne. Hi. Yeah. Hi there. Hi, Wayne. Hi. Hi, Wayne. Hi, Wayne. Hi, Wayne. Yeah. Mabel, are you still on? Yes, I am. How are you? you? I'm doing fine. Good. Good to have you on board, Mabel. The screen there. Well, my son is so good, though. Oh, it is it? Your no, son's not no. doing well. No. How's Wayne White? Hanging in there. Good. 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 Hi, Benny Hoffman. Bi-weekly. What's the status of reopening the church? People are asking. Oh, who asked that? I heard after Labor Day. Is that true? There's going to be a note coming out in the July newsletter that says, yes, Labor Day at the earliest. We're going to get our heads around this and take a cautious approach. Okay. Very good. Beth Richard, are you in Ole or somewhere else? No, I'm in Ole. Um, I've been down here. I'm working on my um, dissertation. So, oh, good for not, you. Um, expected to open until hopefully in August. Okay. Cool. Yes, Andy yeah. smiles. Yes. Hi, honey. Hi. Hi. Hello, honey. Hi. Everybody there. Yep. Hey, Dave. Did you finish the project? Who, honey? Okay. Yes, Hi, we did. Family on board with us. Hello, Klein. Hi. How you doing? We're great. Good. Have all you guys gotten rid of your bucket list since you're all at home? No. <laughs> Still killing it. Did you put up your fence? <laughs> yes, we did. But now something else is after our sweet potatoes. So. Uh oh. Uh oh. It's going. Jot and now we put a worthy gig in the middle of the bed, so maybe that'll keep them away. Uh oh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Hmm. Hi, Kathy Matthews. Is that, uh, is that Lee sitting there? Hey, I'm here. here. Yes, I'm Dave, me. we know you're there. You can take your sunglasses off. <laughs> <laughs> so those, are, those are my glasses. <laughs> switch. When they get dark, but they switch. Yeah, the transition. Yeah, I'm too lazy to switch between glasses and sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thanks everybody for taking a moment to share your smiling faces. Hey, we miss all of you and look forward to seeing you very shortly. The weeks go well, we by quickly. 
Yeah, let's make some hoagies. <laughs> make some hoagies, okay. Yeah. We go, We're Ron. done here and we miss it. Yeah. <laughs> so the Kobe's, Kobe's, you have a new great grandson? Yes, we do. And yeah, what's his name? Tell us a little bit about him. James. James. He's a week old now. James Christopher Lassard. Yes. How nice. You know. Congratulations to you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Warriors are going to sign off. Have a wonderful week, and we hope to see, see you, you soon. Next week. All right. Bye -bye. Take care. Bye. 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 Take care. Everybody stay healthy. Bye. Goodbye. Good Bye. week, everybody. Bye. 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 Have a good week. We're going to take off. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye, bye. Bye. Have a great week, everyone. See you. Annie, you still there? Yeah. yeah. How's Jill doing? Uh, working. Is so she working? <laughs> yep, she's yeah. back to work. Okay. I'll give her our best. Yep. yep. I will. Jane. How's she's, Jane? She's good. 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 Please tell her we miss seeing her too. Yeah, well, yeah. she said this isn't her thing. <laughs> I know. Kelly, how are the boys doing? Oh, they're doing good. Kai's working at the school. He's a student custodian. Okay. 40 hours a week, so he's quite busy. Okay. I wanted to tell you guys I got a new job. I interviewed for our middle school, and I moved, I'm moving to the middle school in the fall. Oh, hey, way to go. Middle school, Kelly. So happy about that. Oli Middle School. Not Oli, Daniel Boone still, oh, okay. but a change, right. a change from elementary to middle school, and I think it'll be good. 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 You'll probably end up with some of those kids you had before. Yep, definitely. That'll be a help. Well, I hope it turns out to be a good move for you, Kelly. That'd be great. Yep. Thank you. Yep, a challenge. It was interesting interviewing on Zoom. Oh, I bet. <laughs> Yeah. But you must have done well. I did. <laughs> what will you be Miss teaching? you guys, though. What will you be teaching, Kelly? Uh, library science and virtual learning facilitator. Mm. So I have good to have one to online learning. Uh, That's a good one to know right now. Yeah. 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 That'll be great. How you Our doing, Kelly? Down in Wernersville to the Chris. We're doing fine up here. All right. No more hospitals. Yes, that's right. no more hospital stays. No that's more right. hospitals. I'm getting tired of the hospitals. I bet you are. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, try and stay healthy. <laughs> Bye. Keep busy, Kay. Yep, Kay went off. All righty. You're looking real good, Julie. Keep up the good work. Thank you. You bet. <laughs> All right. Everybody have a good week. All righty. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Take care. Have a good one. Bye, Mabel. I believe Mabel's off already. <laughs>